So let's get back to 2012 Enigma for a minute. You've, most of you have seen that video. You may remember that I discuss an experiment that was conducted in which a tiny, what's called buckyball, was shot through a grating. And the grating is 100 nanometers wide. The buckyball itself is only about one or two nanometers wide. It goes through the grating and it turns into a wave. The buckyball itself, which is supposed to be a macroscopic object, goes through this little slit and for whatever reason it turns into a non-local wave. <coughs> now again, I talked about the experiment where buckyballs are shot through a 100 nanometer grate, a little tiny slit, they turn into a wave just by hitting the grate. It's like it makes them flip inside out and go from space-time where they're a particle into time-space. That solid particle, which has 120 atoms in it, it's not just like some tiny little thing. It's a ball. It's got structure. It's got form. It's got shape. It literally popped out of our space-time entirely. It flipped over into a realm where time is three-dimensional, space is one-dimensional, and it smears out. It's partly in the past, it's partly in the present, it's partly in the future. And in that state, it looks like a wave because you can't measure where everything is anymore. So now get a load of this. The DNA molecule is only slightly wider than a buckyball, which means the DNA molecule is also subject to quantum effects in which the molecules within your DNA are phasing between being here in space-time and being in time-space where they actually are stretched out through linear time. And they're sensitive to all the other energy fields around them. My name's Jim Al-Khalili and I'm a professor of physics at the University of Surrey. It's very exciting for me, working with John Joe McFadden, to bring together the leaders in the field of quantum biology. We've been hearing at this workshop about a number of different areas of biology where it does seem as though quantum mechanics is playing a vital part. And so everything from how we smell to how birds navigate using the Earth's magnetic field uh, to the way DNA might mutate. Quantum mechanics seems to be playing a very important role and it's only now that biologists are starting to do the clever experiments and the quantum physicists are starting to be able to do the calculations to test those ideas. Another area which I'm very interested in and carrying out my own research is to investigate whether quantum tunneling plays an important role in mutations of DNA. Within DNA, the way the two strands of the double helix are held together uh, are hydrogen bonds that are the, the, the rungs of the ladder, as it were. Within hydrogen bonds, protons, the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, can possibly quantum tunnel from one strand of DNA to the other. If this happens, under certain circumstances, the DNA can mutate. This is where quantum mechanics, that strange theory of the subatomic world, comes together with molecular biology to see whether some of these stranger features of how atoms and molecules behave, things like quantum tunneling, entanglement and quantum superposition, can play an important role inside the warm, messy, complex environment of the living cell. One of the most fascinating and interesting examples is the migration of the European robin. These birds travel south from northern Europe to the Mediterranean each year by sensing the Earth's magnetic field. But they don't do this with some sort of built-in magnet or compass. It turns out the most likely scenario is one based on quantum mechanics. That inside the retina of the robin's right eye, not left eye, They've ruled that out with experiments. Inside the retina of the robin's right eye are, tiny, are proteins, tiny molecules called cryptochrome, um, that are sensitive to light, because that's why they're in the bird's eye, in particular light with blue wavelength. Now, 
sunlight is, has all colors of the rainbow, all wavelengths, but particularly blue light has a particular energy, and what that does is knock an electron from one of the atoms inside this cryptochrome protein. And those ele that electron will jump far away from uh, its partner that it's spinning with. Now, these electrons, are their fates are intertwined, they're entangled. And yet, when they, when they move far apart, they remain over distance, somehow in, in, some, in, in instantaneous communication with each other. And it's when they move apart that that, that distance means the, the action of these atoms is sensitive to the, to the changes in the Earth's magnetic field. And any changes will change the different chemical reactions that these proteins will produce, sending signals to the brain, allowing the bird to, to, to know where it is and which direction to move in.